The tech world runs on rules, predictable innovation, a few dominant players, and a relentless race for the next big leap. For decades, the industry has been shaped by a handful of giants, each pushing the boundaries of what's possible, but always within a well-understood framework. The most, in, the most advanced tools, the most cutting-edge factories, and the brightest minds have all been concentrated in a select few companies. But in late 2025, a rumor shattered that order, Huawei, long thought out of the high-end chip race, was uh, was reportedly on the verge of a three nanometer breakthrough the news didn't just ripple it exploded across the industry the claim was so bold it sent shockwaves from silicon valley to shenzhen igniting debates in boardrooms and labs worldwide this wasn't just a spec bump it was defiance in silicon a direct challenge to the established order for years the story was simple without access to elite chip making tech you can't compete at the top the rules seemed unbreakable Huawei, cut off by sanctions, was supposed to be stuck with outdated tech, left behind as the world moved forward. Yet, whispers grew. Could they leapfrog into the 3 nanometer era, using last generation equipment? Was it possible to rewrite the rules with sheer ingenuity? The tech world, rarely caught off guard, was stunned. Analysts scrambled for answers, and competitors watched nervously. A 3 nanometer chip is the pinnacle of engineering, a feat only TSMC and Samsung have achieved with billion-dollar factories and years of research. For Huawei to even be in the conversation was like winning a Formula One race with a go-kart, unthinkable yet suddenly plausible. Suddenly, the global tech landscape felt different, ingenuity, not just access, was back in play. The rules were being rewritten in real time. The world watched, wondering, was this a bluff? or the start of a new chapter in the chip saga. The answer could reshape the future of technology itself. Let's decode the nanometer race, a competition that's shaping the future of technology as we know it. Those numbers, seven, five, three nanometers, refer to the size of a chip's tiniest components, transistors, the microscopic on-off switches that form the backbone of every digital device you use. The smaller the number, the more transistors can be packed onto a single chip, dramatically boosting speed, efficiency, and computing power. That's why shrinking nanometers is the engine of tech progress. Each reduction unlocks new possibilities for smarter, faster, and more energy-efficient devices. Smaller transistors use less power, so your phone lasts longer, runs faster, and can handle more demanding apps without overheating or lagging. A 3 nanometer chip can handle advanced AI, console quality gaming, and real-time photo editing, all without draining your battery or slowing you down. But shrinking down to each new node, like moving from 7 to 5, or 5 to 3 nanometers, demands mind-boggling precision and cutting-edge manufacturing techniques. At this scale, you're building structures just a few atoms wide, where even the tiniest error can ruin an entire batch, and quantum effects start to play tricks on engineers. Only a couple of companies on the planet have managed to mass-produce 3 nanometer chips, making it an exclusive club in the tech world. So, if Huawei cracks 3 nanometers, it's not just an upgrade, it's a leap into the world's most difficult engineering challenge, and a statement of global ambition. It means they could compete head-to-head -head with the best from Apple, Qualcomm, and Samsung, setting new standards for the entire industry. That's why this tiny measurement, just billionths of a meter, carries so much weight in the world of technology and innovation. In the end, it's the difference between following and leading in tech, and between catching up and setting the pace for the future. How do you build something so small? How do you create the brains of our modern world, packed with billions of transistors, all on a surface thinner than a human hair? The answer lies in a process that's as much art as it is science. Enter photolithography, a process like developing a photo, but on a silicon wafer. It's the foundation of every chip, and it's where the magic begins. You coat the wafer with a light-sensitive material, shine light through a stencil, and etch the circuit pattern, layer by layer. Each layer adds new complexity, building up the intricate highways that electrons will travel. The key to smaller transistors is using shorter wavelengths of light. The shorter the wavelength, the finer the details you can draw, just like using a sharper pencil. DUV, Deep Ultraviolet Lithography, got us to 7 nanometers, but hit a wall for anything smaller. The industry needed a breakthrough to keep shrinking chips. Enter EUV, Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography, the ultra 
fine tip pen of chip making. It uses light so short in wavelength, it's almost X-ray territory. EUV's ultra short wavelength that lets you draw impossibly tiny features for 5 and 3 nanometer chips. This is what makes today's most advanced processors possible. But EUV machines are massive, cost over $200 million each, and are made only by ASML in the Netherlands. They're the crown jewels of the chip industry. These are the most complex machines ever built, requiring global collaboration. Thousands of engineers, scientists, and companies work together to make them a reality. Access to EUV is what separates the leaders from the rest. Only a handful of companies can use this technology to stay at the cutting edge. Without it, you're forced to find much more complicated expensive ways to compete at the cutting edge. The gap between the haves and have-nots keeps growing. That's the challenge Huawei faces. They're locked out of EUV and must innovate with what they have. The easy button is gone. They have to invent a new playbook, rewriting the rules of chip making just to stay in the game. Here's where geopolitics hits hard. Huawei and China's chip industry are blocked from buying EUV machines due to US-led export controls. The goal slow China's tech rise by cutting off the tools for advanced chips. While TSMC and Samsung push ahead with EUV, Chinese companies are stuck with older DUV machines. The message, you can play in the mid-range, but the high end is off-limits. Huawei's top-tier Kirin chips, once made by TSMC, lost their manufacturing partner overnight. Forced to turn inward, Huawei partnered with SMIC, China's leading foundry, to see what was possible with what they had. The EUV blockade was meant to be checkmate, but Huawei wasn't ready to fold. Blocked from EUV, Huawei doubled down on DUV, their strategy multi-patterning, using the DUV marker multiple times to draw finer lines. A new patent revealed their boldest move yet, self-aligned quadruple patterning, SAQP, a technique that could, in theory, push DUV to two nanometer class chips. This isn't just theory. Huawei and SMIC already produced a 7 nanometer chip for the Mate 60 Pro and a 5 nanometer class chip for the Mate 80 series. These milestones prove DUV could reach nodes many thought required EUV. Now, rumors swirl of a 3 nanometer chip for a 2026 gaming phone. Huawei isn't just catching up, they're rewriting the rules, building a parallel path to the cutting edge. It's a high stakes, high cost gamble, powered by massive R&D and national ambition. The world is watching to see if brute force ingenuity can outpace the world's best tools. The big question, can Huawei's DUV approach work at scale and at a reasonable cost? Multi-patterning means more steps, more chances for defects, and lower yields, making each chip more expensive. Even if they achieve 3 nanometer dimensions, performance may lag behind EUV-made chips. Early 5 nanometer Kirin chips perform a generation or two behind the latest from Apple and Qualcomm. As of December 2025, there's no public proof of a mass-produced 3 nanometer Huawei chip, just patents and rumors. Until we see real devices and benchmarks, skepticism is healthy. The leap from 5 to 3 nanometers is massive and unproven. Let's separate fact from hype. Huawei and SMIC have mass-produced a 5 nanometer class chip the Kirin 930 in the Mate 80 series. This proves their advanced DUV strategy works at least to 5 nanometers. Performance is solid, but still a step behind the latest Apple and Qualcomm chips built on true 3 nanometer EUV processes. The sanctions remain. No EUV machines for China, and domestic EUV development is years away. For now, Huawei's path is the hard, expensive DUV route. Still, they've reclaimed market share in China and proven skeptics wrong. Their alternative path is viable, but not yet at the global cutting edge. 3 and 2 nanometer chips remain ambitious targets, not current reality. The world waits to see if they can close the gap. What does this mean for the future? Huawei's journey could split the tech world in two one path led by EUV, the other by DUV ingenuity. If Huawei commercializes 3 nanometer chips with Dove, it's a geopolitical and technological earthquake. It would prove that sanctions can fully stop progress and inspire others to build their own tech stacks. But the challenges of cost, yield, and performance are real. Dove may always lag behind EUV. The industry is holding its breath for 20,000 say, Alberdeik and Sparik and 20, Shapern Mairo Batstery. Will Alberbeter Deitain, for Alber Maikwa's rumored chip, be a true rival or just a symbolic leap? The answers will shape the next phase of the US-China tech rivalry and the future of global innovation. 
The game has changed, and the world is watching.